I'm here with my old friend Vin Russo, and I was looking all over with you. I, I and I knew this was your I'm spot. I'm easy to find. I'm always here. Man. I know, but I couldn't. Find, I must have walked by here 600 times. You I didn't know see why? Because there, there was so many people in front. Oh, is that what it? You, well, yeah. You're always very busy. Seriously. You're very popular. Now, let's look at what you got. You always got different stuff every year. Um, you know, I saw. You know, you're not, I didn't even know you really bred corn snakes. I've been breeding corn snakes for 30 years. So, I didn't know. Yeah. See, that's how that's how well I know you. Yeah, yeah. These are awesome. What Thanks. are those? Tell it's us what those are. Scaleless corn snakes. Take them out. I love the albino one. That's well, yeah. This it here looks like is, your is your. It looks like your blood albino boas. Same color. Uh, uh, red red is very popular, so I try to make things as red as I can. But they actually look like. I mean, if if you they look like candy. Yeah, <laughs> like that's pretty red. awesome. Like taffy or something now, yeah you know with the scaleless ball pythons they say that they have trouble shedding is, is there any similar things with the uh, corn snakes no you know what they have trouble shedding if you keep them too dry right. um what we do is when they're going into a shed we'll give them um a moist space to go to or we'll mist them down like would you use sphagnum moss or something you like could that? use sphagnum moss sure yeah mm -hmm. but usually we, we just mist them down so that they're a little more moist for those few days and then they shed and they're fine. So, so there's no other special care necessary. There literally is no other special care. And they breed and feed just like any other corn snake. Now, there's one thing we have to mention. They do have belly scales. Which is not, uh, unlike the ball, uh, the ball python exactly. scales. Exactly. The ball python scaleless does not. So these have belly scales. Now, what, is that, uh, what advantage is that for them? Ambulation? The advantage is exactly locomotion. They can move. They can also help get the shed off because they can squeeze squeeze it out of them. Also, the scales on a on a snake, what they do is they create structural integrity for the body. The scales, because the ribs come down and they are almost attached to where the scales are. Mm -hmm. So they need that ability to move. Interesting. So yeah. the the cool thing is they don't have scales, but they have belly scales, and they also have an egg tooth, so they can get out of there. Oh, their egg, because an egg tooth is a modified scale. Can the scaleless ball pythons get out of their eggs? I don't know. I don't breed those, but I would have a suspicion that they might not. I don't know. Yeah. Now, really show us that other scale you got there. Is that an aneurysm you said? No, that's a cinder. Oh, a cinder. Now, yeah. what is cinder? Cinder is... Kind of a, like a, another form of that. But what's left behind is there's still some color as yeah. far as the um, orange and pink. And euthristic usually means no red, yet this it's snake is red. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> is it because there's no scales? I think the lack of scales lets you see the skin and some more color. So some more color pops through, you know? Even the, even the head is really Yeah, the, cool hell is, the yeah. head is, yeah. uh, is gray. It's, it's a pretty cool snake. Mm. That's and let me see a blood red one. So you got they got blood blood red ones versions of these cinders as well. Yeah. It seems oh, like this. No, this is a blood red scaleless. Okay, blood red scaleless. Let's look at this one. Is this one pied sided too? Yeah. yeah leave it in there. Yeah, that's probably easier. Yeah, that's got a lot of color. Yeah, the colors are amazing. Now I'm really into red, just like I do with blood boas yeah. and Russo reds and even my leopard boas. I try to get as much red as I can into these things. Mm -hmm. And now the corn snakes. They, they really have a lot of red, and the red really pops through on the scaleless because there's no scales to refract the light. Now, I know you love the leopards because of the reds in them, and, and you really don't appreciate the reds in the leopard unless you put the hypogene or you put the albino gene. I saw you have some albino leopards in. Maybe you could pull one out. Those are just, I love those. I almost like those better than the blood albinos, to be honest with you. The, yeah, the albino is a great trait because it, it pulls out a lot of orange. You get like a creamsicle color look, you know what I mean? Now, being the expert, and well, let, let, let's show off the leopard first. Then I'm going to ask you a question, a hypothetical question, based on your years and years of expertise. Being the expert is that what you said? I, I want your expertise on on a question. I want to talk about to you about the pied boa that's been floating around there. Oh. Everyone's been posting pictures of it. I want your your impressions of it. But first, show us the albino leopard here. We've seen these before, but once again, leopard in and of itself is a dark morph usually. Exactly. That's why they have a lot of white on them as an albino. But people, what they've done is they've added hypo into it and made sun glows, which are really red. Yeah. You know, So there's a lot of, it could be used as a great ingredient to make other things too. So leopard really is a red snake. It's just hidden over by a lot of melanin. Yeah, well, you can see the red, for example, I'm going to put him away. Yeah. You can see the red that we can pull out in, in snakes like this. 
A hypo leopard? Which is a hypo sonoran salmon hypo okay. leopard. So there's two, two hypos on top of this. Oh, so that's, it's almost like a super, really. It's almost like a super, exactly. Yeah. So it's two hypo traits that are working together, and they also make, which looks like almost like a super. Oh, that one almost got out. We almost got an escapee there. Yeah. Good catch. So, like, for example, this one, this one here could be a super because so it's so light. There is a lot of red. Now, has anyone put uh, blood into leopard yet? You know, people have done a blood leopard, and a few people have posted pictures of them. Um, but I'm a little suspicious that they may just be a salmon het blood or salmon leopard right. head blood I don't know I haven't done it myself mm. but the pictures I've seen look very similar to these here they're not really right. really red but you never know they could get redder as they get older I it don't know seem you need it you would need that hypo and that kind of to remove some of the black though right? maybe the hypo will help yeah. yeah I mean there's a lot of different things you could do so hey, what what exciting do you have going on in your breeding program like like for next year maybe what what do you like you I know you always got your wheels turning in your head what would you like to make in the future I don't know. I don't you know. know. You know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's talk about something else then. Pied boa. Okay. We saw it floating around. Uh, someone in Mexico has it. Right. What's your impression of it? Is it a pied? Yeah, it's a pied for sure. Um, good. Yeah. Now, is this pied boa pattern where it's normal skewed because it's a pied, or is it skewed because it's also a leopard? We don't know. We won't know until. It's bred out. It's bred and somebody proves it out, exactly. So I've got a feeling it just looks leopardy to me. So The head, right? Exactly, plus the dark eyes, you know? Leopards have dark eyes. Right. They have black eyes. Right. They have solid eyes. So do blood boas. They have solid eyes, too. So, but again, did the, did the, the pied make it that way? We don't know. So it would be cool if it is a leopard, yeah, yeah. you know? It would be it really a, cool. Is it a different subspecies, do you think, this pine? Well, what happened is a, a lot of um, new genetic um, studies have been done taxonomically through DNA sequencing. And what they've done is they've, they've come up with three different species of boa now. Instead of nine subspecies, right. they've boiled it down to three species. And all of the boas on the west coast of Mexico from from the top of their range, which is Sonora, right. to um, the Isthmus of, um, what's it called, Tijuanapec, mm. all those boas are considered Boa Sigma. So it's a new, a new designation. It's, it's, it's a new designation, but not a new subspecies. Right. The subspecies Boa Constrictus Sigma was the Trace Maria's Island Boa. Gotcha. So what they did was they figured out that the closest the closest described boa from that area was Sigma, so they're just going to call them all Sigma. So all those boas are Boa Sigma. And then when you head further south, Boa Imperator is from south of there. And also, I should say, up the east coast of Mexico is still Boa Imperator. Oh, okay. Okay. Then south into, um, I guess, almost bottom into Colombia and Ecuador, that's Boa Imperator. Then all the boas on the um, east side of the Andes, Andes Mountains are boa constrictor, which are true red tails, right. so three species. So that's where, there, where it comes, is it a new species? Yeah, it's boa sigma. It's not really new, it's always been so there. So you think the pied is, is a boa sigma? Though? Yeah, it's because it's, it's that's the area in which it was supposedly found. Gotcha. Yeah. That boa constrictor, you have your lines you've been breeding for many, many years. This right. is, I saw you, these are the new ones you produced. These are uh, the Lloyd Lemke Brazil. Boa. How many generations are these in now? These are probably four generations. Wow. Maybe by now. And now show us what, how you could tell that that's a boa constrictor constrictor. What, what, what tips it off for you? Well, the widow's peaks, right. number one. The, the true red tail, the, the red on the tails. Um, even, Vibrant, though this, yeah. even though this particular race has a small tail, we'll call it, a uh, short, shortish blotches, um, it's constrictor constrictor. And also the, the big blocky head, and they're born bigger. They're also, a lot of people don't realize this, but if you took a section out of these and looked at it, it's shaped like a loaf of bread. It's not shaped like a sausage. Interesting. Okay, yeah. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. So to see how they're taller, they have like height to them. Yes. So constrictor constrictor has that height. And now they're deemed a new species. So, well, they're a species, not a subspecies. And I know you, you're a big believer that these things don't breed or young. They definitely don't. The females on these 
Um, the first time I ever bred these, the females were seven, eight years old. So it's pretty significant. Yeah. It is, and they're not giant snakes either. Seven feet is a, a pretty. So a people pretty always thought they were bigger than the the imperatos, but they're not. Well, they can be, and and the, and the other thing with size is people are comparing Colombian, pure Colombian Imperator, which get big because they have some some constrictor in their family oh, tree. Oh, they do. Oh, so it's, about. yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little hybridization. closer to the constrictor, you know, race of snakes. So, the, you know, the true Colombian Imperators do get pretty big. I've seen some seven, eight feet, you know. This is not, not tiny, but they're big. Well, Vin, you got some great snakes. Uh, good luck this weekend with all your breeding. It's great seeing you, of course. It's good trying to get you down man. to Florida. Thanks. We yeah. You to move Maybe down one here. day I'll be down here. Uh, you might be my neighbor. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I don't know too many people down here. <laughs> my pleasure. That would be full circle in our lives, right? right? It from would be, from right? teenagers to uh, old men. Right. <laughs> As my father say, you move to Florida to die. He said, well, Dad, we're getting you down here because you don't got much longer. You know what a friend of mine says? He says, sooner or later, Vin, we're just old men in funny clothes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs>